everyone, this is Victoria's Flutes and welcome to my flute collection video. So I made this video because I wanted to share with you all of my flutes. I currently have 32, if I counted correctly, and that's a lot of flutes. So I wanted to share each one with you is some um, uniqueness, what scale it is. I've also made a post on my YouTube channel where I asked you to ask me some questions about my flute collection and I've received a couple questions which is really exciting and I want to address them in this video too. So I've been collecting flutes for many years. Ever since I was a teenager I wasn't really fond of clothing or makeup. I always wanted a flute. <laughs> so anytime anyone would ask you what do you want I'm like I need a flute. I need another flute. And over the years, my just collection just kept growing and growing and growing and I'm every time I get a new flute, I'm very excited. I love to play it, I love to try it. Some of them make it into my YouTube videos, which I'll talk about later. And uh, yeah, let's start with the video then, right? <laughs> and actually, before we start, I just wanted to say um, I still have my merch out on Tee Public. if you're interested. I want to thank many of you who bought my merchandise. Thank you so much. means a lot to me. This is my design. This is the design my friend Kat made for me. So if you're interested, please check the link in my description, which I'll link below, and check out some of the merch. It's still, maybe it's still on sale, I'm not sure, but go check it out. So this is currently my new bag. As you can see, that is me playing the flute and I'll be pulling out flutes from there to show you my flute collection. So let's get started! Aha! My first... It's not a flute, but you know, everyone starts with a recorder. So, as you can see, this is my first musical instrument. Technically, it's not a flute, it's a recorder, but... A lot of kids start to play the recorder as their first musical instrument and I wasn't the exception. I was not the person who was just given the flute, the actual concert flute. No, I started with the recorder like everyone else. It's made of plastic, it's pretty cheap, it's kind of old but still playable. I'm not a professional recorder player, but this is my take on the recorder. I know some of the notes, like just the basic scale. I don't really use it a lot in my videos because it's a recorder. I'm a flute player, but I like to keep it around. It's a nice reminder of where I started and where I am now. This is flute number two. So this flute, again, my parents bought it when I was very little. It looks like a recorder, has a hole in the back. It has some nice pretty gems and it has like a crocodile, a reptile in the front. And unfortunately it's the only flute that I can't play because the top here, I don't know, maybe the changing moisture or age, it broke off. So technically it's not playable. And I think it's just like a nice decorative souvenir flute. So I don't really have much to say about this. When I was a kid, I was really annoyed that I couldn't play it, even when the top was still on. Because it just, it didn't make a good sound, I don't know why. And also the bottom here, the hole is very small. So I don't really have that much to say about this flute, but I kind of like the aesthetics of it. And actually now that I'm seeing, one of the little ornaments <laughs> broke off as well. But I think, I like, I like the look of it. It looks pretty cool. So we're at flute number three. Currently, I don't have it with me, but I did start on a concert, on a Western concert flute, which is right here, as you can see. So I started playing the flute when I was pretty young. I was still in school. It was offered for free in my school, which I'm really grateful for. So I had a choice of which musical instrument I wanted to play, and I just went on with the flute. And my dad wanted me to play the clarinet, but I was like, no, I want to play the flute. And my mom was, she also wanted me to play the flute. So I guess sort of like a team, as a team, we won two against one. And when I got my first flute, it was a rented flute. So currently I don't have it with me. When I opened the case for the first time, 
I just instantly fell in love. It was so shiny, it was pure silver, it looked really nice. And it, it's just, I don't know, it looks like a magic wand <laughs> that you can play music out of. So with this love, I just, I really played it a lot, like every day for 30 minutes. I don't usually play every day for 30 minutes now, but before I was so into the flute, I was very responsible. I always showed it to my teacher that I played flute every day for 30 minutes. And I just really enjoyed it. I played it so much that I even got ahead of the other students. So I could play on a higher level than my other students currently would. And that sort of gave me a confidence boost. I was like, yes, I, I, I know how to play the flute better than others. <laughs> and so I also like to play some popular songs on it. I try to find music. My parents bought me some music books and that just love just kept spiraling out of there on. So this is flute number four. This is the case for it and it's a Chinese Ditsu Ditsi flute. It has some beautiful encryptions here, Chinese letters, and it just looks really nice. So how I got this flute, I remember when I was still pretty young. I did mar martial arts. I did Taekwondo for a couple years. I just really got into like Zen, Zen music, like martial arts music. And so my parents bought this Chinese flute off of Amazon. And it is actually my first um, ethnic flute. So basically a flute that is not the Western concert flute. And it's, um, it's in the key of G. And the holes are pretty nicely spaced for my small fingers. And the hole is right here where I blow. So yeah, it's in, it's in a major scale. It sounds pretty nice. I just really lo like how it looks. And from my other flutes, the hole where I blow is really offset from the beginning. So it gives it that kind of interesting look that the other flutes don't. I like the lines that go through. There's also a hole right here, and you're supposed to use some kind of special material to plug it over so that it produces a nice vibrating tone. I don't have it, so I just put on some tape. So, I mean, it still sounds pretty nice. It doesn't sound like the traditional Chinese flute, but I still play on it. I've used it in a couple of my videos, like my Kung Fu Panda videos, and I just, I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorites, one of my sort of, not top favorites, but it's up there. Up next, we have some Indian flutes. So when my dad flew to India, he, he asked me, what do you want? And I said, flutes, give me flutes. And so he bought these three musical instruments right here. And this is one of them. It's actually in an umbrella case because I tattooed it. I put on temporary tattoos, which then I glossed over so they could stay permanent on the flute. So, I don't know, it was just a child me that I wanted to somehow decorate it make it look cool. But originally it was just like this yellow color without the tattoos. I've played on it a couple times. I don't play on it as much. So let me demonstrate. So the next flute is really, I don't, I wouldn't call it a flute, it's more like a wooden whistle because you have um, the hole right here and that's how you play it. So most of the air comes out here, you don't actually blow, blow across it like a, you would on a flute. But there's only six holes in here, there isn't a hole in the back. So it sounds just like a pretty much sort of a wooden recorder. But what I really love about this flute is that it has a beautiful sound. I mean, flute. I'm just gonna call it flute for now. And anytime I went to a concert of 
YouTubers that I really enjoyed watching, I would come up and say, could you sign my flutes? And so currently this flute is signed by three sort of band groups. The first time it got signed is by the Gothard sisters in the back right here. The second time I went to a Harp Twins concert, as you could see it right here. And then the third time I went to see Katie Flute perform in New York City, so she signed it right here. And so this is just a flute to remind me of the wonderful experiences I had with a lot of artists who I really enjoy and love listening to their music. And the last flute from India is this, and I don't think it's a flute. I'm not really sure about what this instrument is. It says it's made in India. But I believe this might actually be a reed instrument because there's a reed attached. So like you would blow it like that. But once again, I don't know how this instrument works. I probably need a teacher and someone who knows, oops, <laughs> someone who knows how to actually play on this instrument. But I think it looks cool. I just have it on a desk or something. The next flute is a Western concert flute. So I couldn't <laughs> take it out of this bag because each flute comes with its own case where you put it in, you reassemble it and put it back out. So this flute is a nickel flute and with a silver coating on top. It's from Jupiter, the brand that makes the flutes. It's an intermediate flute for flute players. And some of the features is the B hole. So it gives an option to go a note lower. There's also open holes right here. But I closed them all because I have small hands. And when I played in college, I would have a hard time playing fast passages. So my teacher said, you can actually plug maybe this hole, plug this hole. And then eventually I was like, you know, some flutists, they don't use open hole flutes, they use closed ones. And for my fingers, they're very small. Sometimes a child size bracelet or um, ring will fit me. So I just close them all because sometimes they don't cover it fully. And I get a lot of questions on YouTube. Oh, why are your holes all plugged in on your flutes? Isn't that like not the right thing? And I said, well, when they were open, I had to press really hard on them because my little pads they wouldn't fully cover the hole which like if the pads don't fully cover the hole then sound is not produced because some air is escaping so by to actually contradict that I had to press really hard on the flute when I would play which would result in me getting joint pain some wrist pain I was just I was getting very tense when I played the flute which is not good and it resulted in a lot of frequent trips to the repairman. So he would repair my flutes pretty often. And I was like, you know, for my health, for the health of my flute, I'm just going to close these holes. I'm going to press lightly. Sound will come out faster and better. So this is one of the reasons it's closed. And this flute is my stunt flute. So Whenever I go outside and film videos, I usually go out with this one. And this flute, I also used it as part of my banner on YouTube at the top. Native American flute and A major by High Spirits Flutes. It has a nice eagle right here carving, which looks really cool, and some ornaments. So I instantly fell in love with this flute. I used to play it a lot at home, sometimes even more than my Western concert flute. Sorry about that. But now it's just, I've actually used it in a couple of my videos. I don't play it as often because I obviously have more flutes now 
but definitely when I was younger, I used to play this flute more. This is how it sounds. And it's pretty easy to learn for beginners because you just play a couple notes. You don't have to learn some complex fingering, it's pretty easy. And it's a very nice beginner flute for people who don't know how to play musical instruments. Let's go to the next flute. Here's the next flute. So this is a very cheap flute. I think this is the cheapest flute in my flute collection. It was only a dollar. I got it from Mexico at an airport and it was just lying around there with other souvenirs. So this flute is quite interesting. It's a little curved to the side. It The holes are very interestingly spaced and they're kind of uh, square shaped. Some are circular and it produces a very interesting scale. And when I was young, I was like, whoa, this is such a cool scale. I want this flute. And <laughs> my parents were like, are you sure you want this flute? And I was like, oh yeah, it sounds really cool. So I don't use it in any videos because it's just not really in tune. The next flute is another Native American flute. It's in the key of F sharp from High Spirit Flutes. So apparently one Native American flute was not enough for me. So I got this one and it's a little bit longer. It, instead of an eagle, it has like a crow, a bird, and it has some nice jewels right here. And it has like this very cool like see-through hole which is kind of interesting. And so I got this flute because it sounds lower, it's more mellow, more warm. I really like how it looks. It was my first black flute and I own another black flute right now which I'll show later but when I just got this one it just looks so cool. Once again this flute has very easy fingerings just like the other Native American flute. It's easier for beginners. And I've used this flute to perform in a concert for kids and everyone liked the sound. They loved it and I loved performing for them. So I have some pretty fond memories with this flute. This flute is... how do I say it? It's not playable. It's in a very interesting key. It's another souvenir. I just got it because it looks cool. It has like a wooden engraving with flowers and it kind of reminds me of Middle Ages when they like used to engrave a lot of stuff. And also the holes, there's little flowers engraved around it which I thought was cute. My next flute is from Hall Crystal Flutes. So this is a glass flute. It comes in a very enclosed case because it's made of glass. And as we all know, glass is very fragile. And I saw this flute online and when I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get this flute. So it has pretty flower patterns. The holes are right here. And this was the first time when I ordered something online. Well, not actually the first time, but one of the times when I ordered something online without playing it first. And what I noticed when I got the flute is that my small fingers, it couldn't reach the last note right here. It was a little too far for my small hands. And my flute teacher said, oh, don't worry, just use your pinky. And this is the time when I, I realized that instead of forcing my hands, to move in a position where it'll be really hard to cover all the holes. Once again, I get comments on YouTube, oh, why don't you just play like the regular flute? Why don't you use Piper's Grip? Which is just um, using this part of your hands instead of your pads, which apparently helps with reaching holes that are farther down and lower. And 
I've responded to that. I've said I've tried that many times, but my small hands, they just can't reach that far low. So for me, it's easier to just use my pinky and it's easier for me to play the notes and faster. So I'm going to show you how it sounds. You see a little bit of condensation appear there. So when you play a glass flute a lot, you get some uh, water vapor stuck in there, which is fine. You can just, I just rinse it out with water when I'm done playing the flute. It's not a big deal. And I actually have a video where I played this flute underwater. If you want to check it out, it's very cool. It was a little scary playing the flute underwater in a river, but at the end, result was worth it. So I just, I like this flute. I haven't played it that much, but it's one of the flutes that has the most views on YouTube, on my channel. And from time to time, I make a video of it again. Flute from the Bahamas. It was a souvenir that I bought at a shop. I really like how there's a lot of sort of circular patterns on this flute, which I believe was made from just putting the fire closer and just burning them onto the flute. It's, it sounds okay. The holes are evenly spaced out, which creates the whole tone scale. So it doesn't sound like a normal flute would. It sounds kind of a little creepy and eerie because for a flute to be in the major scale, some of the holes, they need to be closerly spaced and some holes need to be farther spaced out so that it produces the major scale. I know, music theory. So when people make flutes, I guess they don't know. And so they just drill in the holes perfectly spaced apart. Very haunting. Oof. So yeah, I don't play it that much, just it's in my flute collection. The next flute is my second concert flute. So this is the professional flute that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. This is the flute that I would play actual shows in, where I would perform in front of an audience. It's made entirely out of silver. It has sort of, it's more, a little more weighted. It has more mechanisms. It has open holes, a B foot. But yeah, I love how this flute sounds. This is the flute that I usually play on, that I practice on. It is, um, it provides more dynamic range. It's just, it's better suited for professionals. I don't know if you can tell, but in um, com comparing it to the first flute, this flute just, the sound is more, I can blow more air, so it will be more rounder, more fuller, it will project more, and I just really, this is, this is the flute that I usually play on, that I make a lot of my videos on. Let's go on to the next flute, or as I call it, an ocarina. So this is the case for the ocarina. The ocarina is fragile. I believe it's made of clay. I can't really remember. I bought it a long time ago. So it comes with this case. It protects it from any scratches. This is my first and only ocarina. It has some interesting holes compared to the flute. It has a lot of holes. Too many holes. <laughs> so I blew, blow through here and the sound just comes out of this back hole. And then some of the air comes out of here. I was on YouTube and YouTube recommend, recommended me this video. And I clicked on it and it was someone playing the ocarina. And I instantly fell in love with the sound. 
it just sounded so different from the flute. It sounded like more of a muffled underwater, like if the flute was playing underwater, it sounded kind of like that. And it's pretty small and it's a great musical instrument for beginners. A lot of uh, fans of the Zelda games play on it because, you know, Ocarina of Time. So these are tin whistles. They're made of metal. And this one, I actually painted it. It, it looked exactly like this one. I just painted it with some white paint and I glued on these gems on top. The story how I got these is that I went to a music store and they were selling these for a very cheap price. I haven't really heard of tin whistles that much so I decided to buy them and try them. This one is in the key of D major and this is in the key of C major. As you can see, it's this. the white one is just a little bit more longer than this one which makes sense because this is in D, D is a note higher than C. And these tin whistles, they're really popular in Ireland. People like to play Irish melodies on these and I started to learn Irish melodies as well. And this is another great sort of beginner instrument for people who are new to music. There's only six holes, they're very sp spaced very closely you just blow through here like the recorder and that's pretty much it. It's not, it's not complicated and it's a very fun instrument for children also. So let's see how each one sounds. This is the C one. Next flute is the Bansuri in E major. So once my dad went back to India, I was like, I need a flute. <laughs> so I asked him to buy me a, a larger flute than he bought last time because he bought these smaller ones and I wanted an actual Bansuri. When I got it, I, the holes were very big, for, very spaced out for my small hands. And I've tried everything <laughs> and so, this flute, it's a little challenging for me, for my small hands, so I've only used it in a couple videos. I used my pinky finger to reach to that last hole. It's, it sounds really good, it's just my hands just can't reach and play as you would an ordinary bansuri flute. I, I like to get creative, so I glued this plastic rose with these cheap gems. As you can see, I struggle because I didn't cover all, all of the holes so I couldn't get the right sound. The next flute is the Native American bass flute in the key of D and this is one of my favorite flutes. I love it so much. I got a comment from someone saying, what's your favorite flute? Well, this is one of my favorite flutes. It's quite long. <laughs> it's a little chubby, you know, it's kind of big. It has sort of this eagle, again, that you can see right here, that has some nice gems. It has this kind of cool ornament and the holes are bigger but since the spacing is small I can play it pretty well. So for me, for my small hands, this is perfect. I love low flutes, flutes that play very low notes and if I can play it with ease, it becomes one of my favorite flutes right away. I really love this flute. I can play it for hours. It's just, it has a soothing, low, healing kind of sound that just, I can play this for ages if I could. If I wouldn't run out of air, of course. On to the next flute. 
So this is one of my most favorite ones as well. It comes with a case to protect it. And this is a fife. Initially I thought it was a renaissance flute, but then someone from the internet corrected me. And yeah, it's a fife flute, it's not a renaissance flute. So I got this flute at a renaissance fair. It's a little different from the other flutes, but I enjoy it. It's from Bamboo. And the video with this flute got a million views. It was my first million views. I was so happy. And uh, this flute is just, it's the queen king of all the flutes in my collection. It's the most popular flute on YouTube that I have. Once again, the holes, they're a little spaced out, but I use my pinky here because it's more comfortable. I don't, it's just easier for me to play. So yeah, one of my favorite flutes. And I forgot to mention, it's in the key of D major. This is a flute from Israel, from Bethlehem. There's words so that I don't forget where it is from. Yeah, I got this as a gift from my dad. He was traveling. It's not like the other flutes, it has a very unique sound because the holes are interestingly spaced out. This is a Morali ebony wood flute. Looks like just like the concert flute, right? And it kind of is. Mechanisms, the keys, they look like the concert flute, but the material mostly is wood and uh, what it does is that the wood makes it a little heavier but I got this flute when I was in college I was looking for alternative flutes I was searching if the material would be different and when I got this flute I instantly fell in love with it it's you sort of have to play it differently and I had I had to adjust to it but it wasn't that big of a deal. I had to relax my embouchure, adjust my airflow, adjust a little bit of my airspeed, but that was pretty much it. I really like how this flute sounds. It's definitely more mellow, softer than the concert flute because it's made of wood. And it's just, it looks really cool. Like, you don't really see a lot of black flutes out there, especially concert flutes. It's one of the flutes that I use the most. Uh, with my silver flute and I'm going to show you how it sounds. So this is a flute from Jamaica. Again, it's written on it so a person like me won't forget. I really like how it's painted. Like, the person who did this, they just put a drop of paint and then it hardened over time. So I get this really cool ch texture. It sounds in the whole tone scale because the, the holes are spaced out evenly, which produces this kind of eerie, interesting scale. Next up is the Morali Wooden Piccolo. So it's small, it plays an octave higher than the Western Concert Flute, which means the pitch is higher because it's shorter, smaller, and what I really like about piccolos is that it's very nice for my small hands. I just feel like this is the natural position for my hands. A lot of people either hate or love the piccolo. A lot of people don't really like it because it's very high in pitch. Whenever I play the piccolo, I try to isolate myself in my room so that my cat won't hear me or anyone who's in the house. It sounds cute, you know, like a little, uh, a little flute child, smaller version of the flute. It's used in orchestras mostly for some symphonies when the composer needs to write some very high-pitched 
sounds, that's when you need the piccolo. It's the highest instrument, I believe, in the orchestra. I'm going to show you how it sounds. This is a Russian Svirel, Svirel, and it's in the key of G. It looks like a Renaissance recorder from what I saw in the pictures on the internet. It has, again, a nice sound. I think I say to all the flutes out there, but it has a nice sound. It has a cool engraving. Some of the holes are different sizes, maybe for the sound. So I do like to play on it because it has this sort of wooden, magical, fairy sound to it. Let's see what we have next. Another recorder! Yes, I know, I'm a flute player and I play recorders. This is a, an alto recorder, which means it's in the key of F. And uh, with the plastic recorder that I showed you in the beginning of the video, this recorder plays a couple notes lower than the smaller recorders they are given for kids. And it's also made out of wood. I looked and on the back right here, it says West Germany. So I was like, wow, this is probably the oldest uh, recorder flute in my collection. There is a crack right here, which I got fixed. And it says right here, it's from Purcell. I don't know, let me know in the comments below if you know someone who has a recorder similar to this. Next is the alto flute. So this, this, this is my favorite flute out of my all of the 32 flutes that I have. This is my favorite flute. It is the heaviest uh, flute that I have, the most expensive one. It's made entirely out of silver and it, it is the flute that plays the lowest notes out of my entire flute collection. So this is the alto. There's two options. You can play it with the straight head joint or you can play with the curved head joint. Whenever I record music for my videos, I use the curved head joint, but whenever I film my videos, I use the straight head joint. Because people, when they see the flute, they associate it with just like, it's sort of just straight. So if people will see a curved flute, they might not understand the, what instrument this is. I also forgot to mention that this is an alto flute from Raleigh Flutes. Almost done with the flute collection, we're almost there. These are three flutes from Key West. They're all basically in the same key of D flat. I just really like their bright colors. Each one has a unique animal or design. Next is a flute that probably won't fit in a bag, and this is the flute. It's a walking stick flute. Super long flute. <laughs> probably won't fit in the whole camera. 
So this is a flute by the Flute Wizard. It's in the key of, actually in the mode of E Dorian or in the key of D major. And I really love this flute. It can play in three scales, D major, G major, and C major. And this is quite rare for my flutes. Usually I can play in two scales in the relative minors, but with this one I can play in three scales and their relative three minor scales. So as you can see, this is the longest flute in my collection. It's actually lightweight. I made a video on it, which I'll link in the description below. It's just, I, I love it so much. It's very unique. In short, I blow here. This is where my fingers go, and the sun sound comes out of here. It's out of bamboo. It's really nice. I like to go on hikes with it. It's just very nature, kind of has a nature vibe to it. And now, the last flute of my flute collection of 32 flutes. If you're still watching, congrats, you made it all the way until my latest flute that I got. And let's see what it is. Ta-da! This is a panpipe flute. It's from Ecuador, and it's in the key of G flat major or in the mode of E-flat Aeolian. So as you can see here, there's a string that you put on your neck. I recently got this flute, so I'm not really, like, I haven't practiced as much, so I'm not sure if I will get a good sound. But this flute, as you can see, has several pipes. Each pipe corresponds to the note that I will be playing. And the technique is interesting. It's kind of like when you blow a bottle across across the hole of the bottle and it produces the sound. Here is a similar technique. And I really like how it's decorated, a lot of bright colors, fuzzy balls. So let's see. And yet, on the back, there's also these things that keep the together the pipes together. And yeah, this is it. Before ending this video, I got a comment on my YouTube post. Someone said, are you strictly a flute girl or are you, do you play any other instruments? And I do play some other instruments. I don't play them as good as I do as the flute, but one of them is the violin. And when I was playing the flute already about like seven years in, I was interested in the violin because I watched some Lindsay Sterling videos and she plays the flute just, I mean, <laughs> violin. She plays the violin brilliantly and I was in love with the sound of the violin and I wanted to try it. So I got this violin in hopes of learning it myself without a teacher, which was a big mistake. I later took on some violin lessons, but I just, I wasn't naturally good at it as I was in the flute. When I got the flute, I could instantly just blow a note, some notes. With the violin, it was pretty challenging. I had to um, push some strings down and that hurt my fingers, like the calluses that the musicians get. So I kind of gave up on the violin, I still have it around but I don't play it as much. One of the biggest mistakes that I did is when I got it, the violin instantly went flat out of tune. So the guy at the store is like, oh, you can just tune it yourself, right? <clears throat> it's like the guitar. I'm like, okay. And so when I went home, I tried tuning it with the pegs and actually the thinnest E string broke. And as you can see it, um, here, it's out of tune. Because I'm afraid to touch it because when I was tuning it it broke 
it um, cut my finger so there was blood already almost caught my eye so I'm just scared of even touching the strings and tuning them so they're really out of tune but yeah it's just a nice reminder to try out musical instruments maybe someday I'll pick it up eventually the other instrument that I used to play was the piano usually people they start the piano as their first musical instrument maybe after the recorder but I started learning piano right after I started the flute which is is uncommon usually people start with piano but once I got the hang of piano I also really loved it I actually bought my own electric piano a while ago right now I don't play on it as much since I've moved to a new place because now it's just tucked away in the corner because when I was in college I was just playing the flute non-stop but I think in the future I will pick up piano again maybe like the violin but I think another issue for me is that I have small hands <laughs> once again so for the piano you need sometimes to stretch out your fingers and have really agile fingers for me I can almost stretch out an octave around that sort of length. Sometimes it's enough for most pieces, sometimes it isn't. But I'll definitely, um, if you guys want, I'll play the piano. Another question that I got on my YouTube post is do I blow the same amount of air, the quantity? And it usually depends. It's not that big of a change. I just have to adjust um, my airflow, my air speed. Sometimes the angle has to be a little different here and there but it's not that big of a change. Another thing that I noticed is that some people name their flutes or their musical instruments. I don't do that. I, it's just, it would be really hard to keep track of 32 flutes and what is the name of each one. I usually just, if I need to name them, I usually name them by how they look, where they're from, what key they're in. I don't actually give them names like Rose and Mary, I don't, I don't do that. I tried doing it when I was younger, but then I just, I lost track of what each one was named. <laughs> so I just, I keep it simple, I don't name my flutes. And I have a small flute, the smallest flute that I have. It's a magnet for the fridge. <laughs> so I don't really count it as a flute, I just, I think it's cute, probably the smallest flute I'll ever play, <laughs> but it's not playable, of course. So yeah, smallest flute. And I just wanted to let you know that my shirts are still up on Tee Public. You can get this awesome tote bag if you like. And thank you everyone for purchasing the merchandise, those of you who did. It really helps, it really supports um, me as a musician. And if you have any more questions about my flute collection, please let me know down below. I hope you learned something interesting about flutes. Hopefully this video won't be too long. <laughs> but yeah, just hope you enjoyed the video and see you later.